So in this video, we're going to look at modeling forces as a vector. So if you imagine that we have a particle here, and we apply a force to it in this direction of the magnitude of, for example, 5 newtons. Well, this direction could change. We could have a force in this direction, again, with 5 newtons. Or we could have it in this direction with 5 newtons. So the point is that the force has a direction and a magnitude, which is why we can model it as a vector. So we're going to look at what happens to a particle when you have multiple forces, all modeled as vectors, acting on a single particle. How does this create the resultant force? And in what direction does the resultant force travel? So that's what we're going to do in this lesson. So if you imagine, for example, A, we have a particle, and the force F1 is being applied to this particle in the direction of 1 and 3. So F1 might be applied in this direction. We'll label this F1, and in column vector form, 1, 3. And in F2, we've got 0, minus 2. So this will be applied directly from above, coming downwards onto a particle. So 0, minus 2. And we'll call this F2. So we're going to find the direction of the resultant force. So we say that FR, resultant force, is the sum of the forces being applied to that particle. So in this case, F1 plus F2. And we can add these two vectors together using simple column vector notation. So you've got 1, 3 plus 0, minus 2. And this 1 is 1 in the i, 0 in the i, 3 in the j, negative 2 in the j direction. When we add these together, we get 1 plus 0, which is 1, and then 3 plus negative 2, or 3 take away 2, which is also 1. The resultant force is acting in this direction, where we have 1 and 1, okay? And we'll label this as FR. So do you want to try and work out the direction of the resultant force when F1 and F2 is applied to a single particle? You can pause the video, and when you come back, we'll go through the work solution. Okay, so welcome back if you had a go. So I've drawn a quick sketch of the forces in question B. We've got 2i and minus 4j for F1, and 5i plus 3j for F2. So we would imagine that the resultant force would end up in this direction. But we can find out exactly by adding these two together. So Fr will be 2 minus 4 plus 5 and 3. So this will be 7 and minus 1. So this will be FR, 7 minus 1. Okay? So do you want to try and work out the resultant force from question C? You can pause the video, and when you come back, we'll go through the work solution. So you can see I've drawn a quick sketch. We have F1, a third I, and 2 fifths J, and F2, half I, minus a quarter J. So you would expect the resultant force to be in something like in this direction. So FR will be added for two um, forces together. So we've got the F1 plus F2. So you have a third and a half, which gives us five sixths, and then two fifths take away or add a negative one quarter, so two fifths take away a quarter, which will leave us with 320, 3 over 20. So in I and J form, this will be 5, 6, I plus 3 twentieths J. Okay, let's try example two. So in example two, we've been asked to work out the magnitude and the, and the angle of the resultant forces. So for question A, we need to work out the resultant force FR. And this will be negative 4 and 6 added to 1 and minus 2. So the resultant force will be the sum of the I components. 
so minus three, and the sum of the J components, which is four. So we can imagine we've got our particle. We've got our resultant force of minus three in the I and four in the J. We'll label this FR. What we've been asked to work out is the magnitude of this resultant force. So the magnitude of it is the length of this force here. And we can work this out using Pythagoras' theorem. Because we're moving three to the left, we can say the base is three. And because we're moving four in the J direction, so four up, we have a right angle triangle. So we can use Pythagoras' theorem to work out FR. This will be the square root of three squared plus four squared. So that'll be a total of five and that's in Newtons. So the angle that this force makes with the I direction, well, if we just make this a little bit bigger, we have this angle here. We have the I direction acting in this direction. So what we're going to work out is this angle here, and we'll label this theta. And again, it's a right angle triangle, where the height is four and the base is three. So now we can use trigonometry. We've got the tan, and the angle theta, will be the opposite four over the adjacent three. So theta will be the arc tan of four thirds. We can work this out as theta equals approximately 53 degrees, okay? So do you want to try and work out the magnitude and the angle of the resultant force in question B? You can pause the video and when you come back, we'll go through the work solution. Okay, so welcome back if you had a go. So the resultant force, FR, will be the sum of the forces acting on it. So F1 plus F2 plus F3. We'll add up all the I components, so negative two, take away three, add zero, so minus five. We'll add up the J components, so 14 take away two is 12. So the resultant force will be minus five I plus 12J. And we can sketch this as a diagram. We've got minus five I, so it's going in in this direction, and then 12J, so it's moving upwards. So it will look something like this. And we'll label that as minus five and 12. So to work out the magnitude, we know this length will be five, this one will be 12. So again, we can use Pythagoras' theorem. So the magnitude of FR will be the square root of five squared plus 12 squared, which is 13 Newtons. And again, the angle it makes with the I component in this direction will be in this angle here. So the tangent of theta will be the opposite divided by the adjacent. So theta will, will be the arc tan of 12 over five 67.4 degrees. Okay, let's try one more question. Okay, so finally, in example three, we're told that a particle is in the equilibrium when acted upon by the forces F1, F2, and F3, which are given here. And we've been asked to work out P and Q. So because it's in the equilibrium, this means that the particle is stationary. So F1, plus F2 plus F3 will equal zero. Then these three forces will cancel each other out. We know F1 is 3P and 5Q. F2 is 8Q in the I direction, minus 6P in the J direction. And F3 is minus 33 in the I and 3 in the J. And this will have zero I and zero J as a resultant. So now we can use simultaneous equations to work out P and Q. We know three P 
plus 8q minus 33 will equal 0, and 5q minus 6p plus 3 will also equal 0. So therefore, 3p plus 8q will equal 33, and negative 6p plus 5q will equal minus 3. So using simultaneous equations, we can work out that p is equal to 3, and q is also equal to 3. Okay? Well, thank you very much for watching. You can download the full lesson and worksheet from my website, mrmathematics.com. There's a link in the description below. Thanks again, and take care.